In this lesson, we're going to apply the sine and cosine law for obtuse triangles. The sine law and cosine law can be used to determine unknown side lengths and angle measures in obtuse triangles. The sine law and cosine law are used with obtuse triangles in the same way that they're used with acute triangles. So if you have a look at this chart, this is the same thing that we were looking at before in terms of our sine law and our cosine law. If you want to use some acronyms to help you out, we can use side, side, angle here. We can use angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. For cosine law, a, oops, that's a side, side, angle, side, or side, side, side. And you'll see these letters coming up. So that might be a way to help you remember or put it on your cheat sheet so that you can remember uh, when to use the sine law and when to use the cosine law. Now, because we've learned about that unique feature when we're using sine, it says be careful when using the sine law to determine the measure of an angle. The inverse sine of the ratio always gives us the acute angle, but the supplementary angle has the same ratio. So now we're not just going to look at the angle and assume that that's the answer. We're going to have to make a decision. Does an acute angle make sense in this situation or is this an obtuse angle? So you must decide whether the acute angle or obtuse angle is the correct angle for your triangle. Because the cosine ratios for an angle and its supplement are not equal, we don't have to worry about that when you're using the cosine law. So let's try some examples to see what we're talking about. Example one, in an obtuse triangle, Angle B measures 23 degrees, and its opposite side, B, has a length of 40 centimeters. Side A is the longest side of the triangle, with a length of 65 centimeters. Determine the measure of angle A to the nearest tenth of a degree. So lots of information being given here. One, that it's an obtuse triangle. Uh, we've got angle B measuring 23 degrees, that's important. Opposite side, B has a length of 40 centimeters, and side A is the longest side. That's important. Longest side is across from the longest angle. Shortest side is across from the shortest angle. That's going to be really important here. Let's make a note here. The longest side... is always opposite the longest angle or largest angle. Okay, so let's draw this triangle first. So obtuse meaning we've got an angle here that's going to be bigger than 90 degrees. I've got my longest side is side A, and they're saying that that longest side is going to be 65.0 centimeters. That's going to be across our largest angle, angle A. Other information we're given is that angle B measures 23 degrees, so I'm going to call this angle B, and side B is 40 centimeters. I think that's everything that I've got, so we're just going to call this angle C, but angle C doesn't really help us here. So we want to figure out what the measure of angle A is. So I'm going to use the sine law. I can see that I have two sides and an angle. The angle's opposite side B, so that's a pair. Got, and then A is opposite side A, so that works for me. I get sine A over A and sine B over B in my formula. So solving for angle A, and plug everything else in, I've got sine A over 65 and sine of 23 degrees over B which is 40. Solving for angle A, I've got that sine A is equal to 65 times sine of 23 all over 40. So angle A is the inverse of sine of 
all over for me. Punching that into my calculator here. Inverse sine 65 times sine of 23 divided by 40. We get 39.4 degrees. All right, so let's put that in here. Angle A is 39.4 degrees. But what do you notice about that angle? This is an acute angle. Well, if this is an acute angle of 39.4, and we've got 23 degrees, 180 minus 23 minus 39.4, we get, whoops, that didn't work, 39.4. <laughs> 117.6. Well, 117.6 is the biggest angle. Well, that would mean side C is our largest side, and that's wrong because it says that our longest side is side A. So there's no way that angle A can be an acute angle, so that's wrong. Let's erase that, and what do we have to do now for this to hold true? So because we did an inverse sine here, we could have got the acute angle or the obtuse angle, but we know when we inverse sine something, it always gives us the acute angle. So now we have to make a decision and say, since A is the longest side, angle must A must be an obtuse angle, and we have to find the inverse. We know that sine of A is equal to the sine of 180 degrees minus A. So we got our angle A to be 39.4. So if we take 180 degrees minus 39.4, we would get that angle A is 140.6 degrees. And double check, right? You can always do that and find sine, oops, that's what I wanted, do sine of 140.6, you get that same decimal place that you would get if you did sine of 39.4. Okay, they give us the same, so that's why when you do inverse sine of that, it's always going to give you the acute, and we need to decide from the problem that we want the obtuse angle which is what we have now. All right, that's it for example one. Let's take a look at example two. Colleen and Juan observed a tethered balloon advertising the opening of a new fitness center. They were 250 meters apart joined by a line that passed directly below the balloon and were on the same side of the balloon. Juan observed the balloon at an angle of elevation of 7 degrees, while Colleen observed the balloon at an angle of elevation of 82 degrees. Determine the height of the balloon to the nearest meter. All right, so let's draw this balloon. I've got it here, and it's tethered, right? We also have a vertical height here. Now, it says that we want to know the height of the balloon. So that's H here, right? Determine the height of the balloon to the nearest meter. Why am I not drawing the string then? Well, I'm not drawing the string because it says, want to observe the balloon at an angle of elevation of seven degrees while Colleen observed the balloon in an angle of elevation of 82 degrees. So it's not at 90 degrees. They're at two different places. One person is closer and one person is further apart. And if they're looking at an angle of elevation, well, one would be further away, a smaller angle, and Colleen would be closer 
at a much steeper angle. All right, now it also tells us that Juan and Colleen are 250 meters apart. All right, we can use uh, some, some angle information here and some complementary angles and supplementary angles in order to find some angles that we probably are going to want to use to figure out H. Because H, if I can use this um, 82 degrees, I would say opposite over whatever I've got. But I don't know what J is. I don't know what this value is down here. So there's no way I can use right angle trick. If I could figure out what J is, then I could use opposite over hypotenuse, and I can use the sine primary trig ratio in order to figure that out. So looking at my red triangle here, I see that 82 degrees, if I can figure out what 180 minus 82 degrees is, I could figure out what this angle C in here is. So angle B, C, J, who is equal to 180 degrees minus 82 degrees, and that would give me 98 degrees in here. Now, 98 degrees in there, how is that going to help me find J? I can't use the sine law, and I can't use the cosine law, I don't have enough information, but I could find this other angle up here, that might be useful. If I can find that angle up there, then I could use the sine law to figure out J. So how do I figure that out? Well, all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So that angle J, B, C, is going to be 180 degrees minus 7 degrees minus 98 degrees. And that would give me an answer of 75 degrees. So that angle in here is 75 degrees. Whoops deleted my entire triangle, 75 degrees. Now I have enough information to use the sine law. I can use J over sine of angle J, and I can use, that would be B over sine of angle B. All right, let's go ahead and do that math. Go ahead and do that and come back and see if we get the same answer for J. So I get an answer that J is 31.5 meters. Now that I know that, I'm just going to write that in here. Now, does it make sense that J is an acute, well, an acute what? Does it matter? They already gave us the angle. So now we recognize that in example one, we were solving for an angle. So it mattered if we had an obtuse or an acute angle. But in question two, in example two, we were given the angle. So we didn't have to worry about the sign being one answer or another, because the fact that there's a 7 degree in there and a 75 degree in there, it's going to give us the answer we want. We don't have to worry about it. So the only time we have to worry about whether our angle is acute or obtuse is when we're actually solving for the angle. Okay, so we can just use our answer. So we've got a right angle triangle now, and we're going to use, let's relabel this in another color, opposite and hypotenuse because adjacent doesn't give us any information that we can use. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine, so sine of theta O over H. Sine of 82 degrees is the height that I'm looking for, which is sort of confusing because I'm using a lowercase h, but that's what that's looking for is that height, and then I've got my 31.5. So the height should be 31.5 times sine of 82 degrees. Let's try that out in our calculator. And we get a distance of 31.2 meters. And that's the final answer for what we're looking for here, now it says, determine the height of the balloon to the nearest meter. So we would just write balloon is at a height of 31 
meters, and then that satisfies the rounding constraints. All right, last example is example three. Using reasoning and the cosine law to determine the measurement of an obtuse angle. The roof of a house consists of two slanted sections as shown. A roofing cap is being made to fit the crown of the roof, where the two slanted sections meet. Determine the measure of the angle needed for the roofing cap to the nearest tenth of a degree. So what they're referring to here is here are my two slanted sections, and then a roofing cap, you can see it's sort of darker there, use another color, is right here, and it's a little piece that's put right between there. So they're asking us what is that angle for that roofing cap. All right, so we've got our triangle drawn there, and if it's easier, you can redraw your triangle just to get a better idea. So we're looking for this angle. We know that this is 17.0 feet. We know this is 20.3 feet and this is 33.5 feet. And if they didn't already tell us that we're using the cosine law, we would know that this is the side, side, side situation where we'd be solving for theta. Now, because this is an obtuse angle, we start thinking about, well, what are my rules for an obtuse triangle, right? Is this the obtuse angle? Most likely, because you can see from the diagram that that would probably be the biggest angle because this is the biggest side, right? But we also know that for cosine, it doesn't really matter if we're doing inverse cos, because inverse cos should give us that obtuse angle. So in this situation, we're just going to do the same thing that we did in our acute triangle unit and use our cosine law to solve for the angle. So let's label this A, B, and C. So we're solving for angle C. So C squared is equal to A squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. Substitute what I have here, 33.5 squared, 17 squared, and 20.3 squared, minus 2 times 17 times 20.3 cosine of the angle I'm looking for. Okay. Go ahead and rearrange till you get the theta by itself. All right, as you're simplifying and figuring out how to get theta by itself, you should be noticing at this point a difference between what we're doing for our cosine law for an obtuse triangle versus an acute triangle. In our obtuse triangles, we usually had two negatives, a negative here and then a negative on the other side. And when you divided them, you got a positive and you're really happy and then you did inverse cosine. At this point, you're looking and you can see there's a little bit of a difference. When I divide both sides here, I'm gonna end up with a ratio that's actually negative. Right, these will cancel out and I'm left with theta is equal to inverse cos of a negative number because I've got positive 421.16 divided by 690.2 and we actually want that for an obtuse triangle. That negative tells us that our angle is on the other side so it is an obtuse angle. So go ahead and put that in your calculator. So you go inverse cos 421.16 divided by negative 690.2 and you get that obtuse angle of 127.6 degrees. And that's great. That's exactly what it would look like when we do an obtuse angle, solving for an obtuse angle using the cosine Thanks for joining me in today's lesson.